Hello, my lovely people. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on your time zone. And I welcome you all to Linda's TV show. If it is your first time of coming across this wonderful platform, oh, you are welcome. And if you like what we are doing here, kindly subscribe, put on your notification bell to all notifications. This will enable you to know when we upload a video here. We react to all forms of videos. We are here to inform, sanitize, educate the members of the public about what is happening in the globe. We do not, as a disclaimer, we do not preach hate speech. We do not preach misleading information. We do not preach violence. We are here to inform and educate the members of the public. I always use this opportunity to appreciate YouTube. Somebody said, why do you always appreciate YouTube? I appreciate YouTube for creating this wonderful platform. YouTube is my best platform. I have used other platforms. I am in other platform, but I like the way YouTube operates. I appreciate them for giving us this wonderful platform that we are using to bring this information to you. If you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Subscribe. You can become a member of this platform. Join the membership and God will bless you. Hey, hey, hey my people. The ends justify the means. Asali Dokubo, what did I hear you say? Did you say that they should release Mazin Nandi Kano? Finally, finally, Asali Dokubo opened his mouth. If you don't know whom this man is, eh, you open your mouth and say they should release Mazin Nande Kano. Have you realized now that Mazin Nande Kano is a godsend? Have you now realized that all those lies peddled against Mazin Nande Kano is not true? You open your mouth, there is nothing, even Asali, if I can remember. Asari was say, make Mazina the Kanu no come out alive. Finally, oh, finally, Onu Kurunjo Ekugoma. My people, I want you to listen to this video. I saw it yesterday. I was surprised. In fact, I went to the toilet to wash my face. So I'm going to be honest because this is the last statement that I expect from this man because this is the greatest enemy of Mazin Nandikano and Biafra. If you are following what is happening, you are going to watch two different videos here. I want you to pay attention to the second one. Uh, although sometimes some of them are not steady, but these videos are for a purpose. I see why, Mama. Hey, hey, hey. Egwa to an asari. Asari fuel ga wuna gas. I wuna na fuel. Giko henye huzike go he hi jana gi. Ndi ba inere go din. Carry their boat come. I me see them. Then catch them. Then flog them. See they are gone. It don't happen where where. We don't settle matter where where. For river. You don't go there and say, what did they happen now? Why are they do this thing? I mean, flog them. Through defense of Garwebi, uh, uh, carry staff food for anybody. One Korofo, we no carry anything. Go flog them. <laughs> because in me, in me, because with the fear thing go do cool. These are the things happening. That's the reality that people don't want to hear. The people who hear it. I didn't know they were going to kill me. Now I don't ready for them. They come kill me. If they fit. <laughs> the world will know every details of the atrocities against Nigerian people. This is just the beginning. No? This is just the beginning. Until they are called to order. Until they are called to order. Okay, man. Until they start to behave like in, like others behave in civilized society, not like the ones where they kill innocent children and women and other people, they destroy people's house. If we cannot provide, protect the people, allowing them the candle to come out, probably because of one man, that hundreds of people will be killed every day. Allow it to come out. It's as simple as that. The lives of these people are more precious, more important than keeping in and the canoe in the prison. <laughs> you do not have 
the, 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 the power, the strength, the wealth with her to provide security for the people. You are not lucky talking of property. You are not talking of... You don't have... It's as simple as that. From the aspect of management of resources, both human resources and fiscal resources, which is money, I will put it a bit on the part of the state governors. Because, for instance, you see, um, if you do one thing, it can, have a, it, can, it can have a multiplier effect. Look at Abba now. I've been to Abba many years ago, many, many years ago. What is stopping Abba from being an industrial hub? You don't expect, ideally, like in a country like Nigeria, with the real or perceived marginalization against the Igbos, you wouldn't expect that when the Yorubas and the Awusas, or if you like, the Awusa Fulanis, as we have it now, when they are rotating power amongst themselves, and there's this ethnic suspicion that one day you guys might say you want to go, you ordinarily won't expect that they would want to do much in terms of building the Southeast industrially. Then it now boils down on the state governors to make sure that these things are being done in such a way that the Southeast would naturally evolve industrially in such a way that the Southeast will not only feed the Nigerian market, but also the Togo market, the, the Ghana market, the, the Cordova market. The Southeast have the ability. So I will put that on the, the state government. So, Dr. Reggie, let's walk a, a bit back to oh. history, you know. This agitation that is very intense now, you, you know, by the, when Obasanjo was in, in government, when Yeradwa was in government, uh, even when Jonathan was in government, it wasn't as intense as, as it is now. Like Prince said, it was masop. You know, Ms. Rico was driving a masop agenda. You know, my people need to move in for the actualization of the sovereign state of Biafra. If, uh, by, uh, as of 2013, Nam Likano was not even campaigning for the Southeast to exist to exit Nigeria. He was asking questions, how do we make this country a better place for everybody? Can't we sit down at the round table and, and renegotiate this union. So it was when a certain government came into power. The Buhari government. The Buhari government and excluded the Southeast clearly. That was when the agitation took, we gravitated towards violence and all of that. And the government, instead of okay, let me not even answer the question for you. The point of it is this. This present administration is continuing in that direction of the Buhari government. So don't you think that the federal government still holds the ace towards the resolution of this crisis. Okay, I'll pick it from two sides. First, the part of the federal government, then that of Nam Kano. First, for the federal government, um, I've asserted before that for me, uh, the Buhari government committed what I can call an unforgivable sin. What do I mean by that? If Buhari were to be a Kingsley Mongalu, if it were to be an Omoyele Shore or any of these, you know, um, to, to use the word in hip hop, new cats, you know, if it were to be any of these new cats, it would have been forgiven that, oh, Shore is, is, not, is not experienced when it comes to leadership at that kind of level. So that, that, that's why his reasoning and his attitude is so sectional. But for a Buhari that has ruled this country as a military head of state, that has worked in an organization whereby you cannot avoid interacting with people from other ethnic groups, like the military. The military issue. Okay. So the thing is, one of the solutions is don't come to the table with greed. I'm a Yoruba well, man. I'm a Yoruba man. I'm sorry, I have to say this. I'm a Yoruba man. But I think that other ethnic groups have been largely greedy, including the Yorubas, sincerely. Okay. The reason why I say so is that now, there are three, except my, my secondary school <coughs> teachers are wrong, right? They say there are three major ethnic groups. But if you look at it, it says that um, coup that happened in the, is it 1963 or something? 66. Now, that particular coup, you will see that the Yorubas and the Ufulanis have been so greedy that they've been rotating in among themselves. Now, Tinumbu, if you use maybe 80 years, at the end of the day, if he's leaving, even before he leaves, the Awusa Fulani are already hungry for the power, see if it's their bad tribe. Immediately, the Awusa Fulani are leaving. The Yorubas are already, you know, are already roaring like lions, roaring like thunder. Right. You know, to grab the power, then you ask yourself, 
What happens to the South? If you look at it now, sorry, sir. If you look at it now, in in Nigeria, if we begin to rank it, mm. <coughs> the heroes that are the third largest ethnic group are not well represented. The president That's number one, true. vice president number two, <laughs> senior right. president number three. Speak up. That's right. number four. Okay. All right, then. Um, let Let me come to the prince now. Prince, you're shaking your your head. Is that disbelief or? No, well, but let's, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm shaking my head because each time we talk about this thing about the Southeast, mm. I get very emotional because I'm a Southeaster. But I get uh, my emotion goes to the fact that everything anybody's saying about the federal government still does not resonate. It boils down to what do the Igbos themselves want? That's you have governors in the Southeast. That's where I'm You have governors who have been receiving money from now, the federal government. Let, let me ask why you. Why are they not developing the South? Let me ask you. Sorry, that's, sorry. that's exactly why, no. I, no, um, that's exactly where I'm coming to. The governors, the Southeasterners, the governors. You know, why haven't they... Because we see a situation whereby a governor comes out and says, look, uh, I want to align with the center so my people can enjoy the benefits of democracy. We hear of that. But when it comes to development, is it, is, is, is it a question of greed? When it comes to the agitation, when it comes to the release of... Is it, is it a, a situation of aligning with the center or a situation of greed? What exactly is playing out? Let's, let's make sense of it. Let me, let me start by saying that power is not given. Power is taken. So you need to snatch it and run? No, no. definitely. Okay. Power is not given. Let us, let us align to that. Secondly, when you get the power, you either use it to the benefit of the people or you use it for your own selfish ends. What has continued to play out in the South is, other than the late Sabun Dakwe of blessed memory, who else in the South East, as a governor, has developed and has done anything meaningful in the South East? Nation one governor. So basically, the South Easterners that they represent the people governor, as they, governors do not even really want development they in are the area. problem. Now, when you say you want to align with the federal government, or you want to align with the power for the benefit of your people. In all these alignments, what development have they brought? And that brings me back again so, to I'm you know. When Mbakemon, the governor of Enugu State, and he said he wants to end it at home, that people should come out. If you don't come out, he will demolish your shop. And, and I said, This man is not serious. He doesn't understand what is at play. Why is it that the South East governors are not sitting down? With all the senators, with all the representatives, with all the elders and chiefs and aces, why have they not sat down to ask themselves, what is the core problem? Does that have anything to do with the disposition or the perceived disposition of, of the Igbo man as proudful? Well, let's say, you know, there is this saying about the Igbos, where what is it? The Igbos have no king. Mm. But we have, we have outlived that. Have we? Yes, we have. Because now the Igbos negotiate. They discuss. But unfortunately, in all these discussions, it's not about the survival of the ordinary Igbo man. It's about the survival of a few. We saw what Richards did in Igbo State. Using the state's funds to build statues. So are you what, now kind saying, of, what kind of stupidity is saying, as a if, governor? Are you now saying... Going by everything we have seen and the fact that those that are politicians within the, within the Southeast doesn't, that don't seem to be representing the people's rights, if and probably when the state of Biafra is, is, is uh, given, would we see any, anything different? Those agitating for Biafra, are they not able? Those that eventually, if there is Biafra, that will oversee the affairs of Biafra. Are they going to report people from the moon? Those governing the South East are Igbos. Those governing the South East right now are Igbos. Charity yeah. begins from At home. So for me, as an Igbo man, let me put it clearly, for me as an Igbo man, it's not about Biafra. Okay. It's about the development of the South East. So that brings me to this question. Let me finish. Let me finish. Sorry, let me finish. Let me finish. Few years back, I, I belong to an organization known as Imo Network Group. Okay. We went to Umaya to visit Nandikano just before his home was you know, ransacked and 
and all of that. And we were very clear. I, as an evil man, I believe that if the, the Southeasterners will come together and adopt what I call 24 years development right. plan. Okay. Which was what we gave to him. We said, like, like, the, like the, Dr. Moshola said, we asked him, let us take I, uh, the whole of IPOP and the whole of Abga. Okay. And have Abga as a party for the Southeast. Okay. Pr pr the you know what, you know what would have happened? What would have happened is that by now you probably have about seven states under Abga. Okay. And that gives them the strength to negotiate. And that gives the Igbo man the strength to come to the federal and say, this is what we want. Exactly. Now look at, no, hold on, look at Lagos State. Let's go back to the two former governors, Fashola and Ambode. They set the standard for the development of the state. Go back to the southeast. What do you have in any state? Please. What do you have in any state? Please. Have, Please. I'm coming. Please. 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 I'm having talk. Let me finish. Let me finish. Now. Let me finish. now, when Mba came out and said, stop Monday sit at home, did he provide security for those he's asking to come out? Oh, yes, he did. Why come it, how come that when the unknown government will come out to strike, you will not see the presence of security? What is going on? It simply shows you that it's either the governors themselves are the beneficiary of this seat at home, All right. or the local okay. chiefs. Okay, P Prince, uh, you said something about negotiation, that Igbo should negotiate. You also said that uh, power is not given, that it is taken. I have two questions for you. One, who did Jonathan take power or was it given to him? That is one. Two, when you talk about, I don't think that these problems are layered. Clearly, the state governors have their responsibilities, which they have failed, according to you. A lot of people will agree with you. But on the other side, on the other hand, don't you think that the federal government is also driving the marginalization? This present administration is constructing a Lagos Calabar coastal highway, flagged off under construction. The same government is constructing a Badagri Sokoto highway. Third off, under construction, these two super highways cut across more than 18 states of the Federation. Buhari built rail lines across the length and breadth of this country. South has got only 40 kilometers. Do you hold the governors responsible for not building a coastal highway that didn't cut through the southeast? A coastal a super highway that didn't cut through the southeast from Badagri to Sokoto? Is it the problem of the governors or is it a national problem? I don't even want to talk about appointments in the commanding heights, both under Buhari and this present administration, where the Southeast has been clearly excluded. Um, Mr. Koro, personally, I do not believe in this federal government as an Igbo man. I will not hold federal government responsible for what's happening in the Southeast. I will hold my governors responsible. If the federal government has decided not to build rail lines in, in, the, in the southeast, why are your governors not coming together to build rail lines com connecting the entire southeast? Rail Don't they have the money? The rail lines were only decentralized just about a year ago. It doesn't matter. Since a year ago, what have they done? How many, how many, many, how many states have been come down? In the southeast, how many states have been come down? Come down. Even the road network in the southeast. How many of them are working? I say the problems are layered. No, how many of them are working? Maybe you should take a trip to the south. Okay, how many federal well, roads in the south listen, are working? Listen, when we had problems with federal roads in Lagos, I remember the governors then fixed the roads and sent the bill to the federal government. The federal government paid back. And then Why are the south? It doesn't matter. A debt is a debt. Why are the southeast governors not thinking out of the box? Why are they not thinking out of the box? And that, that, will now bring me, that will bring me to this question, Prince Chilaka. You know, you've been talking about the state governments or the people in the southeast, the governors in the southeast not doing what they ought to have done for their people. And then I want to ask, who is really benefiting from the insecurity in the southeast? Because, for example, we also heard uh, during the time of uh, Namdekanda's broadcast, he made mention of uh, how the southeasterners, how the big wigs in the southeast are actually part of the people, part of the challenges, the problems that you're having. And that is what Imapafo talked to be 
how politicians of the South is 10 years back, you know, towards his release or his freedom. Now, we have someone here back coming up to say, sit at home in the South, it must happen. Whereas Namdekano have said, there's no more sit at home. Ima Powerful also happens to be the IPOB spokesperson says, we are not the ones giving the sit at home order because we cannot kill the people that we are agitating freedom for. They have also pointed out saying that some people are benefiting from the sit at home order and the unrest in the Southeast. So, Mr. or oh, Prince Chilaka, I will ask you, you're smiling already. Who are the benefactors or who are the people benefiting from the sit at home or the unrest in the Southeast? The governors are beneficiaries, every one of them. They cannot deny it. Even the ones saying know, that it's not true. There's a, see, you know that every month they collect security votes. Also, there's a, there's a particular amount that is given to states that are troubled in terms of security. Where are they applying those funds? The political class in the Southeast are responsible for the arrest in the Southeast. Because when it is time for election, they bring out guns and hand over to their thumbs. You don't get to collect it back after the elections. What is happening in the Northeast today? We all know how it started. It's a political class. You cannot, you cannot in any way exonerate the political class from what is happening. Is it not a poor man on the streets trying to survive by the day? Is it the one that is financing such okay. madness? All right. Because so of, we have the kind of money to do that. Well, big questions. Uh, but because of time, let's, let's quickly touch on the involvement of another individual who, is, um, who has declared uh, uh, Biafra in exile. I'm talking about Simon Ekba now. His name was mentioned not too long ago by my colleague here. Um, Simon Ekba has consistently called for uh, agitation in the Southeast. Even when uh, uh, um, Namdi Kano has dissociated himself from some of the agitation in the southeast. Nigerians, you know, have said, look, and then words, words that one can consider derogatory, are constantly being put out on, uh, you know, the different uh, media that he uses. And uh, Nigerians have said, look, bring this person home. Now, I do understand that we may not have an um, uh, extradition treaty with... Um, um, with a with Finnish um, government. But what is, according to you now, what do you think his interests are? Some have even said that he may be sponsored by certain individuals in government to ensure that insecurity persists in the Southeast, as that will affect elections. Because we see you know, cases where elections are to be held, elections that will ordinarily put people in power help them decide on who will govern or, or their person of interest being in power. And you say, people must not come out to vote. Is that in the interest of the people? Okay. Um, <coughs> let me quickly touch on um, a question he asked that. Who, oh, is, go ahead. who is benefiting from this um, seat at home in the Southeast? Um, number one. The non-state actors, you see, this sit at home, to my mind, started as a solidarity that, oh, why would you um, arrest Namdi Kanu? You know, is it because he is vocal? Is it because he wants something good for his people? If that be the case, um, we will sit at home every Monday to express our interest, so it, to, to express our dissatisfaction. So it started as a solidarity movement. But then, these non-state actors began to realize that, oh, so we can truly, you know, declare sit at home. So that means that we have so much power. And they started profiting from it, and by the way of profiting from it, it came to stay. If you ask me again that, who is profiting from it? I can say the federal government. You ask me how. The federal government is largely dominated by the Yorubas and the Awusa Fulanese, right? Now, if 
the Yorubas and Fulanis want to keep rotating power among themselves. Number one, if there's no peace in your area, it helps them. Number two, if um, you are not as financially stable as you should be, it helps them. You know, so if they don't want you in power and your source of wealth, you are declaring sit at home to kind of like you say, okay, people should sit at home. So those at the federal level, those that, if, those that the federal level that starts to benefit from it will keep it like that, but they will just manage the situation in such a way that it doesn't lead to a total breakdown, breakdown of law and order or threaten the corporate existence of Nigeria. I'll give you an example. The case of bandits, for instance, the bandits are there. They are operating. But when they are going overboard and it begins to kind of like be like it wants to threaten the corporate existence of Nigeria, government will react. But after a while, government will pipe down. Why don't you react fully to nip it in the board fully? So the, 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 the federal government itself, that is largely dominated by the Yorubas and the Awusa Fulanis, you know, the, 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 the lack of peace, the lack of coherence, if you look at it, is to their own benefit. If there is peace in the southeast, you would think oh, you want to come up with a with a united something, or you want to you, you want to align with one political party or form an alliance. But if there is no peace, then that may be difficult to say. And now there are like four different kind of political voices, or you or, or, or if you, I don't want to say leadership voices. There are four kind of factions that you can either align with one or two or three or all. Number one, that of Unamdi Kanu. Because Unamdi Kanu has stayed long in detention, he's, he, he's beginning to lose steam to some extent. <coughs> you have Sorry. Simon Epa, which also have his own followers. You have Peter Obi, who is being seen as the political leader now of the Southeast. So you you not have to imagine that. Okay, this Southeast, where do we really go? You see people that they are supporting the Nam Dukanu, that okay, free Nam Dukanu, we won't be Afra. You also see those people during the election, they will say, Oh, we want to go and vote for Peter Obi. You will see the same people who say, Why should you extradite um, Simon Epa? So there is confusion all over the place, except for the Igbo ruling elite. That are profiting from the corporate existence of Nigeria, that the corporate of an evil man that has built businesses, for instance, all Jews of Kalu, for instance, will not pray that Nigeria should disintegrate. Because why? He has built businesses across the length and breadth of Nigeria. So the Biafra agitation is mainly for the the, the Talakawas, the Mekulus, the half not or the middle class of the Southeast. But the the, 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 the people that are feeling the pain. Or the people that can make that happen, they won't want it to happen because it will affect them, it will affect their interests. And that's why you see that Nnamdi Kanu is not being released. Because they will think that, oh, the people that can fight for him, the people that can speak on his behalf, just as the Yoruba kings, the Yoruba political elites spoke in favor of Sunday, but sometimes when you walk through life, when you pass through life, if you have not passed through life to such an, end, to such an extent that you need some people to speak for you apart from yourself, then you haven't passed through life. But when you get to that eighth stage, if you don't have somebody to speak for you, then you'll be in problem. One of the problems in Africa is facing is not because he has committed any crime that has never been committed in Nigeria before. Mm -hmm. Secession in Nigeria started way back in the 1960s during the days of Isaac Adakaburu. So in Africa is not is not new. All the, um, this this uh, Odume Gojuku he did it. You know, Sunday go and a host of others. But the truth is. Those that can advocate for his release right now are people that are benefiting from... You would think that they are divided. When these people, when they meet with, with the president, they are beginning to say, oh... But the likes of the late Iwanyang who advocated, he, uh, people like that spoke, of, uh, spoke out. These are people of the U, as well. Yes, the late, the late Iwanyang is respected. But those that can speak now, right now, are... The people that are, have the political power so, right so now. The governors, the governors in the southeast have gone to see to see the, the uh, to to see the pre president in this disregard. You know, do you think do you think it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's just a show off? 
I think I think um, there is no serious dimension to it in the sense that, for instance, when the president was campaigning and he went to the southeast, what was the point of dialogue of the southeast people? Okay, Buhari marginalized. Buhari, okay, you want to say unjustly detained in Amerikan. It's okay. But when the Miloko was campaigning, what was the Igbo's point of negotiation as an ethnic group? The Igbo leaders, the Ofus the, you know, a host of them, what was their point of negotiation with, um, let's say, Peter Obi is their own, with Atiku Abubaka and and this continued detention of Unamu can, of course, you cannot exclude the um, leadership structure in the country. For instance, right. for instance, if the Igbos are being given a fair opportunity to be president, one, it will have this tension. Two, no matter how long it takes, an Igbo man will come there and also release his own people. But Doctor, even, 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 even some people just as, sorry, I need to say this. Just as Buhari went on after. Sunday ago, Mona Ahmed Inumbu came there, he piped down. So if Buhari went after Imam Bikanu, Mona Ahmed Inumbu has failed to release him. If there is no greed in the political structure of Nigeria, if, let's say, the president now is Peter Obi, maybe he would have also released Imam Bikanu. So that's why I said that you can't move really away the import of political power. And you have leaders now that they are mainly advocating for themselves in the southeast. You understand? So if okay. they make it a point of pressure that this is what we want, well, I mean, you know, we will give it to them. Releasing in Africa is not really a problem. Wonderful people, as we have finished watching this interesting video, please, I want to see your comment, your contribution, your opinion in the comment section. Like I said earlier, let us do it constructively. Tell me what you think about this uh, video that you have just watched and also about the platform if you haven't subscribed what are you waiting for please remember to subscribe put on your notification bell share this video and remain blessed